how much can you really help someone when you when you couldn't even help your own dad? And that sounds really thingy. Because think to yourself, well, how hypocritical am I, how, am I to try and help someone through mental health when my dad ultimately took his own life? Now, thinking back to really, I probably kept my dad alive a lot longer throughout the years just by be, trying to be the best one I possibly could do. I would love to have seen me where I mean, Sash would have been so proud to, to, yeah, it would have, definitely, definitely. So, yeah. But yeah, but then when he did walk in the ring, I was like, oh, shh, oh, it's happening, it's happening. Yeah, oh, he's right in front of me. You're thinking the reality sort of sets in that this is happening now and Denzel Bentley's right in front of me. Like I remind myself, yes, I am the British champion, but but I still need to look at it as though I'm not as well. Like Steve says, we're the challenger at the end of the day. Regardless if you're the champion, you're still the challenger. The hitman, Nathan Healy. Yeah, How are you? yeah very good, thank you, mate. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks, looks good. Looks you still, good. like, you still got that little bit of like, oh, I can't believe I've, I've done it sort of thing. Is that, have I read that right? Yeah, no, well, yeah, there's, um, like, I feel no difference post-fight at all. Like, so I, it's weird because I have to rem, 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 remind myself that I am the British champion because I think it showed, well, it's a token I'm a, a, a half-decent fighter, so... Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's good. I feel it's great, like the response in, in, in City and stuff. How proud people were for everyone that's backing me in the last fights as well. But yeah, it's, it's just it's been under the Christmas tree all, all December. Really? Yeah, it's been under the Christmas tree, and then and now it's it's made its way to the to the to the man cave. So, but no, it's, yeah, it's been great. I love that you say that that has confirmed you as a half decent fighter. So congratulations. Yeah, yeah cheers, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm now a half decent fighter. So. What, yeah. uh, what's life been like then as a British champion? You say it's been under the Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, I've seen you doing all sorts of media. Like you've been on Talksport. You've been. You've taken that belt everywhere, really, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, it, it was particularly the first two weeks after the fight. I actually loved every second of the media work because it, it, it's no thing. Before, if I do an interview or something with YouTube or whatever it is, there'd always be some comments on there. that are sort of not the best or positive in, in, towards me. But I think based on the performance in my last fights, it was much more positive, much more positive. And so it was just, I really enjoyed it. So you can actually look back at the videos and think, oh, people thought I was quite good. And obviously I've still got to make improvements and stuff and still get better. But I, I did enjoy, I was a talk sport, Alan Brazil. Mm -hmm. I did a podcast with George Groves. George Groves is someone I was really looking up to. Like, and. It's, it's great, it's been great. 25 years of hard work, huh? Yeah, yeah, essentially. I think, yeah, well, I had my first ever contest, contest at, yeah, at 11 years old. I've been boxing from the age of nine, so yeah, it is, mate, it's, it's been a long, a long time, but I'm finally, hopefully, getting the rewards from it now. It's interesting, we were talking off camera about our first ever interview. You were boxing in Birmingham. Yeah on a Queensbury show and you were just hoping to sort of get noticed. Yeah, well, you, you asked me then what, what's, what, what's the dream? And I, obviously I was afloat at the time. There's about 360 that went down to Birmingham to support me on that night. And, and I, I just said to you, well, I hope my dream is to get signed by Queensbury because I want to be on these big shows like this and then, and then hopefully become the British champion because you never know what can happen after that. And then four years later, I'd got signed twice by Frank headlined three shows and in my last show I, w I became the British champion so when I said you never know what can happen next well well that's the next part now well, let's see what can happen next because I've, I've done that bit obviously I'm defending it now which I'm looking forward to which can be very tough but still but yeah this, this, this year could be really good provided I just keep doing what I've always done. How many times have you watched it back? That oh, win, that too moment. Many, too many times, too many times. Did like, you watch it back immediately as soon as you got home, stick it on? Well, I didn't, I got back to the hotel because we stayed in Manchester and I don't think I slept for about 36 hours. Because again, well, I was actually, when you said about the media and stuff, on Twitter, I went on, I was trending number one on Twitter, so I was like... Rightly uh, so. Yeah, and again, the, the comments were mint, just so positive. So I was reading them and reading them and reading them and, and then I did actually see um, a ripped off copy of the fights on YouTube. So I think it was like six in the morning, I'm just watching the fights. Presumably you reported that to Oh yeah, yeah, I, 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 did, I did report yeah. it yeah, to make sure <laughs> the copyright and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, but, I, yeah just, and then I probably watched it, it's particularly the highlights that BT Sport, I mean, TNT Sports put together was 
was just great. And then even just the, I just love watching back just the corner work with Steve, where he's just speaking to me. That's and a great video, yeah, that wasn't it? Just going through everything, just like all the work that Steve's putting into me and, and stuff. And, and like he said, you can make history today. This is obviously on the way up to, to club for me city. There's been many British champions from Manchester, from Liverpool, Birmingham, but from Stoke on Trent, there's only ever been two. And both at featherweight or, or maybe even lighter. But I was obviously the first middleweight, so we did make history. And it was great for everyone to see what Steve did for me. There was a line that he said, I think it was something like, they don't do that to people like us yeah. around where we're from. Yeah. I was like, oh, that, yeah. that actually gave me chills that moment. And you actually see me mouth, fucking go on. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. realize I shouldn't swear really. But, that, but, he, just, but he, he knew exactly how to get what I, what I needed to get out of me. And obviously, and like he said, the last round, I think I switched off maybe a little bit in the 11th. I'm not too sure, or it's just closer. And he just said, come on, son, we can take this back to the potteries. We're both very proud, stoked people. And, and, and like I said, you can bring him back to the potteries, and that's what we did. And, just, he, and he pushed me all the way through it. You look so confident, ring walk, dancing about, flipping up. Were you as confident as you looked, like, especially on the ring walk, or was it just a yeah, bit yeah, of a Yeah, no, no, I was. I was. Like, I never said to anyone that I was going to become the British champion until the day before. When we were at the, when, when you, you interviewed me just before, and you said, what's going to happen? I said, I will become the British champion tomorrow. And there was no, there was no, there was no f falseness in that. I genuinely believed I was going to become the British champion. And obviously when I was doing the line and stuff, I'm just enjoying myself. I'm having, a, not many people go for a scrap having a big karaoke with 2,000 <laughs> stokies, you know what I mean? I could but hear that, you as well. But yeah, well, exactly, yeah. but yeah, but it's, it, it's just, yeah, but, but then obviously you get in the ring because that's the first time I'd ever walked in first. So it was a strange one for me. And I did the whole of Delilah, which I'll do from now on, because normally I walk in as the trumpet starts. But I knew if I went in first, and the, when I normally do, they cut the song and then Bentley would come out. But I thought, nah, I want him to hear the whole thing. So I did the whole thing and actually thought I enjoyed it. So I'll do that again. But, but yeah, but then when he did walk in the ring, I was like, oh, Oh, it's happening, it's happening. Yeah, oh, he's right in front of me. You're thinking the reality sort of sets in that this is happening now and Denzel Bentley's right in front of me. And if you were to pick any middleweight in, in, in the country to fight for the British title, Denzel Bentley probably wouldn't have been up there on my list because I wouldn't want to have fight for him. But when you're offered something like the British title, you can't turn the opportunity down. So, yeah, and he was there and then obviously I did what I needed to do. But yeah, but the confidence was always there. Tash. You've yeah. maintained, yeah. The, have, yeah. did you maintain it throughout? No, did you grow it the, the, the morning after, that's straight off. Right. So I've got to get rid of this. So I got rid of it. But obviously, people thought it was a November thing, which I got away with it because it was a November thing. But I thought to myself, nah, th this time. Obviously, people know it was in, uh, to honour me dad. But I thought, nah, this time, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it again, just to honour me dad again. But this time, it's not November, so it looks a bit strange having a tash. And, I don't particularly think it suits me at all. It suited me dad, it looked mint with the task my dad did. But, but yeah, I just thought, yeah, it wasn't the task that made me win the British title, but I just thought I'll keep it for this one. Whether I keep it in the future, I don't know, but I'll definitely have it for this fight. It's like a, like a good omen. Yeah, almost, yeah, almost. Yeah, but yeah, having a tash outside of November, I mean, it, it's a brave move. Oh yeah, it's, it's a bold statement, it's, it's, a, it's a bold one. So that, yeah, that's why I've done it, so. And I mean, even yesterday I thought, oh, cause, he said about bringing the shorts and the belt for pictures. I thought, oh, do I take the tash off? But I thought, nah, that's the old point. I'm doing it, I'm doing it for my dad, so Good I'm sticking it on there. Good man. You took the belt to, to his grave as well? No, I didn't actually. No, no. I, unfortunately, I don't, I don't actually, I don't actually, um, I don't really do that to be honest. I don't like go to, to me, to, to me, where my dad's resting and stuff. Not so obviously, No, I just don't. It's weird, yeah. I just don't. Yeah, because he, he's, he's buried with me now as well, so. Yeah, cause I could. Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah, it's it's strange. I don't do that kind of stuff. So, but like, if my dad was with me on that night, so like I said before, no, no doubt I'd be very proud. But, but yeah, he's it through the medium of the tash at this moment in time. So I have to, yeah. It was it was a beautiful moment. Uh, yeah, I think. Really. And, and and also like some of the things that you say, like in post fight interviews. I think it was the one with me, you, and Frank, and you started talking down the camera about you know if you're struggling, make sure you get help. Yeah. I don't think you realise how many people you end up talking to when you when you send out strong messages yeah. like that. Are you, yeah. are you conscious of that? Yeah, I am. But but I'm also conscious on the, on the flip side of thinking to myself, how much can you really help someone 
when you when you couldn't even help your own dad, and that sounds really thingy. Because think to yourself, well, how hypocritical am I, how, how am I to try and help someone through mental health when my dad ultimately took his own life? Now, thinking back to it, really, I probably kept my dad alive a lot longer throughout the years just by be, trying to be the best son I possibly could do. But yeah, but it's but on 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 reflection now, when I listen to certain people like podcasts when I'm going on runs and stuff. I thought, I wish, I wish my dad could have listened to this person that I'm listening to now. Because I think he would really, he could have taken things from that. Yeah, and again, maybe just speaking to people, but, but, it, but if he had spoken to people, maybe just changing certain outlooks on life. Like my dad always brought me up to be non-materialistic whatsoever. So materialistic things don't interest me at all. Obviously it's nice, but it was all about as long as you, you work hard and you've got everything you need, not everything you want, but everything you need, that's all you need. And that's how my dad was all the way through my life. But in later life, it suddenly became that he wanted to do really well to provide these materialistic things for his family, which is great, but, but then that became the sole aim for him. And then anything deviating from that was like a failure. So ultimately that's what, whereas if his goals could have changed a little bit or his perceptions on things could have changed, Maybe he might not have been in the situation he's in now, but but yeah, that's just the way he was wired up. But I guess look, you've gained so much experience from yeah. that, and you're able to now yeah, help yeah, others yeah. because of what's happened yeah, to you. Of course. If that hadn't have happened, you, like you wouldn't be able to talk to so many people about this sort of thing. Yeah, and I'm, I, and I, I, but I wish he would have been here to to see the task because he would have yeah. absolutely. Because I remember when Chris Eubank Jr. come out with the yellow shorts, and I was saying. Why is he coming out like his dad? And me, and me dad was like, that's the greatest thing a son could ever do for the dad. And I was thinking, and then he was like, I was thinking, at the time, I didn't get it, but now I was a father myself. Obviously, two girls. I, I wouldn't particularly want them boxing. Not for any thing, reason. I, I, I want to keep, I wanna keep their faces pretty, not like a yeah, dad yeah, yeah. getting punched in. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, I would love to have seen me where I mean, Tash, he'd have been so proud. To, to, yeah, it would have, definitely, definitely. So, yeah. Well, listen, British champion now, first yeah, yeah. defence coming yeah. up. Another magnificent seven show. I guess these yeah. are just going to be lucky omens for you. Same Tash, same name of the show yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. But it's Brad Pauls this time. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about this fight and I thought, had you not fought Denzel Bentley yeah. and we'd scheduled a fight against Brad Pauls, I feel as though you might even be like a, an underdog in this well, fight. Yeah, well, absolutely. Like, he's the, the current English champion. So he would have been the English champion before I was saying I won the British title. At least I think that's when he won the English title. But, and he's been on my radar, radar for a while, just like Denzel Bentley, because when you're fighting particular opponents on, on that journeyman route, you'll look at your, these opponents to see what they fight like. And then you'll see that they fought Denzel Bentley, they fought Brad Paul. So, so you, you, they're on your radar anyway. And I'm sure in his first 10 fights, I think he knocked like seven out or something. So he's a very, very, Hard puncher, and he's the new key bomb. Yeah, the new key bomb, the bomber. Yeah, well, and, and, and he's in very good shape as well. Like I, I obviously keep myself in good shape, but you can just see he looks a strong, solid set lad. So, yeah, he's very good. So you rate him? Oh, I very much rate him. Yeah, I, 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 when you look at the top fifteen, he's one of the top ones in there. You expecting a, a hard, hard fight? I expect no different than what I would give to Denzel Bentley in yeah. regards to. I know what the British style gives to yeah. people. And that's why I detach myself from the British title itself. Like I remind myself, yes, I am the British champion, but but I still need to look at it as though I, I'm not as well. Like Steve says, with the challenger at the end of the day, regardless if you're the champion, you're still the challenger. So the preparation is even more so than the, the previous fights, which was the, the last one was brilliant. But we just pick up on that for this one and hopefully keep improving. Is that easy to do though? Because you are you are now the champion. You are the guy with the target on your back. You'll have the Brad Pauls, other guys around this sort of level, all shooting for the king. Yeah. You're the king right now, yeah. but you've got to think you're not. Yeah, it's easy for me. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm anything anyway. Like when I said, uh, it's like legitimising myself as a good fighter. Listen, I do believe in myself. Made no mistake about that. But I, yeah, but I, yeah, it's um, I just do what I need to do to obviously win. And, but the talent makes a difference. It, but it, but it legitimises me in the eyes of others. They know what I did in my last fights and what I did in the fight previously with Jack Flatley. I've got better every single time. So I hope I can just keep that going. But, but by me being the champion changes nothing other than I know there are bigger fights along the way. I would love to become the first person to fight for a world title from Stoke Contents. That is, 
like I said to you before, you never know what can happen after a British title. If you win a British title, you can be considered a very, very good fighter on the world stage, just like Denzel Bentley was, regarded on that world stage. So for me now, that's, what, that's my next target, and, and I'm not going to let anything slip to get me to that, that, that stage. Listen, you are an unbeaten British champion with a huge fan base yeah. and a great story that yeah. people really like. That's ticking a lot of boxes, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so <laughs> I keep winning. Huh? That's a, like we say, that's the hard part. So the hard part is just keep winning. But, but, me and, but Steve, he's just an amazing bloke. He's, he's one of my best mates as well. Give just, him his flowers. Yeah, yeah. Just like I said, it was great in the last fight that because Steve is in the background. You don't see him because he, you don't, he wants it all for the fighters. All for the fighters. So it was great to... It was great for him, to, for him to be seen in that light because he's a great bloke, one of my best mates, and, and will take me wherever I can go. I don't know, but wherever I, wherever I can go, Steve will take me 100%. I heard you said you had a vivid dream before the Denzel Bentley yeah. fight, and you yeah. sort of saw it all play out. Have you had any more? No, 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 no. The, 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 yeah, the vivid dream I had, it was, it was about three weeks, two and a half, three weeks before the fight. And I won the British style, and then I, but it was so vivid. And then I woke up. You know when you wake up in the gyms, you go, oh, it wasn't real. It wasn't real. I was like, oh, I still got to do the thing. But, but bear in mind, I also did have envisions weeks before that of getting stopped by Denzel Bentley. So it was a real week. But, then that, but that just showed how I was developing throughout the training phase, going through the weeks. And obviously, the, the confidence was growing and, and legitimately growing as well. And obviously, that dream, I think, just cemented that psychologically, I, I really did believe that I was going to do it. But yeah, I had to still do it in reality. Does that normally happen, these dreams? Um, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've, um, no, I, I don't really remember half my dreams. I just wake up in the morning. I never do it. Yeah, no, no, I don't remember them. So that was, that was why that was a bit of a strange one. But no, I haven't envisioned anything particularly for this one. I just, I always have little things in my head of what, what's going to, potentially going to happen and stuff. But... But yeah, nothing at this moment in time. So no dreams about knocking out Chris Eubank Jr. at Stoke Stadium or anything. No, like no, that. no, because I just I can I mean I can just can imagine him being. I would love that fight to happen there, but I can I can just imagine him being an absolute nightmare to work with. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. He might be brilliant. He might be like let let's not fight Nathan Eubank straight away, and that'd be amazing. But and for me that would be just just yeah, what a fight that'd be. Like, th that would be a brilliant fight, but I haven't dreamt about that now. So, but the Stoke dream is still very much alive, yeah. right? It felt like heading into that Bentley fight, you, you took a lot of pressure in with you. Obviously, you had, you had the Tash as well, which we've talked about yeah. as well. The Stoke dream seemed to be, you're taking that into this fight. There was a lot in there, and you've kept it all alive. Well, yeah, the, 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 it, was just, it was a very much sink or swim kind of moments. Mm -hmm. It's either, in particular, like you said, but that's why I don't look at things, and, and if you... Listen, Stoke City's always there. That's always the, the end goal, or at least the main goal. But you've still got to get it, and it's pointless. Denzel Bentley was looking at Janabek before he was looking at me, and I know that because I saw comments he put on Twitter before I blocked him, mind. That's when I blocked him. Have you but, unblocked him now? Yeah, I've unblocked him. He's a, he's a top lad. He's a top lad, but, but, but I, know he was, I know he was looking at Janabek before he was looking at me, and it's pointless me looking at Stoke, Stoke before I'm looking at Denzel Bentley or looking at Brad Pauls. They, they're the most important thing first and foremost before. But you, but you do know that by winning, obviously, you can get the next step and get one step closer to it. And I think there's no closer moment than right now, to be honest, with this fight with Brad Pauls. So you could say there's even more pressure on. But there's always pressure. You've got to win no matter what. So whether it's you fight, yeah, I, I can't really give any more detailed answer to that other than I'm very, very close, and I'm, 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 yeah, and that's it, really. You're obviously taking it very seriously. It's a big, big fight for you. Yep. Um, have you taken it that seriously that you've now blocked Brad Pauls across social media? Uh, no, 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 not just yet. I always it's like. It's coming though, isn't I, it? That I, hammer, yeah, yeah. Well, the well, well, hammer well, is well, coming. Well, to be fair, <laughs> it nearly happened yesterday because as I'm going through Twitter, a Brad Pauls post just flagged up on my, on my. The algorithm. Oh, my, yeah, yeah, he flagged up and he just said big news tomorrow. And it just, zzz, I got like zzz, adrenaline, adrenaline for a second. Zzz. I was like, whoa, like, I was thinking, ah. Oh. But I thought, nah, and I won't do it just yet. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a day. And then, and then yeah, then, then I'm 
once the press conference that's all sorted, I've seen I've seen the person, and then the next time I see him, will be on on the night. Okay, what's going to happen in this fight? Ju uh, I can't. I don't know. I don't. I I, I always give you the Not same. Worst prediction I, ever. I, 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 I always give you. The, I always give you the same sort of fence sitting answer. Obviously, the plan is for me to win, and that's what ultimately I, I believe will happen. But we'll have to see on the night. All, the, all I can say is, it'll, it'll should be the best I've performed. Good luck. Pleasure speaking yeah, to you, thank my you friend. Much, Good to Cheers. see you. Yeah, thank you.